Good morning, my name is Stefan Altazan. I'm technical consultant at Fluxim and I want to present you today how to simulate and optimize OLEDs with a scattering layer. This work was done in collaboration with the Theta Ave, the Old Center and Dupont Tejin Film. First, I want to introduce what Fluxim does. So Fluxim is a company that provides a simulation software for OLEDs and OPVs, that is called Setphos, and a measurement platform to characterize this device and extract material parameters called PIOS. This is a picture showing the different optical channels excited by the recombination of a hole and an electron inside the synfilm layer stack of the OLED. Indeed, not all the light will be able to get out of the device. A part will be wave-guided or guided inside the substrate. Some of this light will also excite some plasmons at the metal electrode. Finally, only approximately 20% of the light will be able to leave the device. Setphos can easily calculate the relative power emitted in the different optical channels. This is an example of a simulation where the thickness of the ETL was varied in the x-axis. We can see in red that the maximum of the light getting out of the device is obtained for an ETL thickness of approximately 75 nanometers. But still, it only represents approximately 20% of the light emitted by the thin film layer stack. In order to get more light out of the device, some optical tricks involving light scattering are required. One way to simulate OLEDs including light scattering tricks could be to run a full wave simulation, for example using a finite element solver. The problem with such simulation is that they would be very time consuming and these simulations should be run several times for different dipole positions and for different wavelengths. Moreover, the presence of a thick incoherent layer, like the substrate, inside the OLED device would make this type of simulation almost impossible. So technologically relevant OLEDs are very difficult to simulate with a full wave approach. Therefore, the approach that we have chosen at Fluxim is to couple the nano-optic physics of the oscillating dipole coming from the recombination of a hole and an electron with ray optics for the light propagation in incoherent layers. This is how it works inside Setphos. First, the user needs to import the scattering data, for example, an AFM image of a rough surface or the optical properties of scattering particles. Then Setphos will automatically compute the corresponding BSDF. These BF, this BSDF are then passed to the core of the software where the light propagation coming from the oscillating dipole inside the, the synfilm stack is calculated. Finally, the results like the luminance versus the angle are auto automatically calculated and given as an output. These two features, importing an AFM picture and the miscattering feature, are new in Setphos 4.2 which was released in August 2015. In the previous slide I was talking about BSDF. A BSDF is just a table relating the incoming angle to the outgoing angle. For example, if we take a flat interface, the reflection part of the BSDF is just one line, as the light is only reflected in one angle. The transmission part of the BSDF is the Snell law, where we can see the angle of total, total internal reflectance at 42 degrees for the light coming from glass to air. But when using a rough interface, the light will be reflected and transmitted in different angles. Therefore, the BSDF for reflection and transmission are not just single lines anymore. Moreover, we can observe the disappearance of the total internal reflectance angle as we still observe some transmittance at angles above 42 degrees for the light coming from glass to air. We now have a nice model for the simulation of OLEDs including the scattering tricks. But it is nice to compare simulation results with experiments. So this is the experimental device that we have chosen. 
It consists of the top emitting white OLED with a, with a thin film encapsulation. On top of it, we could introduce an interchangeable AZ P80 foil. Like this, we can study the effect of the scattering efficiency using the same white OLED stack. We just need to replace the AZ P80 foil by another one. These are the experimental results that we have obtained for these devices. In red are the results for the OLED without any scattering layers, in green are the results with a 9% AZ P80 foil, and in blue are the results with a 59% AZ foil. The first thing, thing that we can observe is that the luminance strongly increases with the A's. Also interesting is that the emitted color, represented by the CIE X and CIE Y quantities, strongly changes with the A's of the P80 foil, going from a blue emitting OLED without P80 foil to almost a white emitting OLED with the 59% AZ P80 foil. In order to simulate such devices, we first need to have a model to calculate the scattering introduced by particles. In Setphos, we have implemented a mi scattering model to calculate the BSDF of this kind of layer. For each particle, a full wave calculation is performed to calculate the scattering properties of each scattering event. We can then consider in the simulation the variation of all optical properties of the particles, like their size, the refractive index or the refractive index of the host. We can also vary the concentration of these particles. Then, between each particle, we will consider a ray-like propagation using a Monte Carlo simulation. These are the simulation results for the BSDF of a 9% AZ P80 foil. It is interesting to notice that the reflectance of the layer increases for large angles. This comes from the fact that at large angles, the light pass inside the scattering layer is increased. Chances to meet a particle and to undergo a backscattering event are thus increased. This is for the same reason that the transmittance is more diffuse for large angles of propagation. It is also interesting to notice some preferred angle of propagation which are surrounded by a purple ellipse in the transmittance PSDF. These angles correspond to the optical resonance of the scattering particles. Once the BSDF of the scattering P80 foils are calculated, we can now simulate the full OLED stack. In the graphs, the simulations are represented by the lines and the experiment by the squares. We can notice a very good agreement between the simulations and the experiments for both the luminance and the color point represented by the quantities CIEX and CIEY. Now that we have a good model in agreement with experimental results, we can use it to optimize the device. Here, we wanted to optimize the thickness of the P-dot layer in the device with a 59% AZ P80 foil in order to obtain a color as close as possible to the white. Therefore, we have run a simulation of the CIEX and CIEY quantities varying the thickness of the P-dot layer. We can find that the optimum thickness for the P-dot was 85 nanometers to get an OLED emitting a color close to the white. In the previous slide, we were optimizing the thin film layer stack of the OLED. But it is also possible to optimize the scattering layer to maximize the efficiency. Here we have swept the concentration of scattering particles in the PAT foil in order to maximize the device efficiency. We can observe in the graph on the left that the efficiency of the device strongly increases with the concentration of the particles at low concentration, until a maximum which almost corresponds to the 59% AZ P80 foil. Then, for higher concentrations, the efficiency of the OLED starts to decrease because of an increase of both the backscattering and absorption in the particles. In the figure on the right, we represent the emitted color of the OLED versus the angle and the particle's concentration. We can observe the strong variation of the emitted color versus the particle concentration already discussed earlier. 
Another popular approach to introduce light scattering in the OLEDs is to use rough surfaces. In this example, the rough side of the substrate is facing the air. But the rough side of the substrate can also face the OLED thin film stack. We talk this time about an internal extraction interface. Most of the time, this rough surface is covered by a panelization layer with a high optical index. In this case, Setfos can also compute the corresponding BSDF. We can notice that in this latter case, the reflectance and transmittance are much less broad than in the case where the rough surface is facing the air. The reason for it is that the optical contrast between glass and the high index layer is smaller than between glass and air. The first thing we wanted to do was to benchmark our BSDF calculation with the BSDF computation from a standard ray tracing tool. We could actually notice a very good agreement between the two approaches for both the transmittance and the reflectance of a rough glass substrate facing the air. But the calculations takes much less time using the approach embedded in Setfos. Indeed, this kind of simulation would only take few seconds for Setfos, where it can take hours for a standard ray tracing tool. Now that we have calculated the BSDF and successfully benchmarked our approach, we can simulate the full OLED including the rough substrate. In green is the luminance versus the angle of the OLED with a flat substrate. The purple line represents the simulation of the OLED with an external extraction interface. We have found an increase of emission by a factor 1.7. When using a rough substrate facing the OLED scene film stack in blue, we have found an, an increase of only 1.35. The best result in red were, was obtained with a substrate whose both sides are rough. In this latter case, we have simulated an increase of efficiency by a factor 2.1 compared to the original flat substrate. To summarize and conclude, we have launched a new module called Light Scattering that can be combined with the OLED SynFilm stack emission. This allows the simulation of OLEDs with outcoupling structures like rough interfaces and scattering particles. Finally, we have shown that the scattering structures and the OLED SynFilm stack cannot be separately optimized. A simulation combining both aspects is, nece is necessary. Thank you for watching this, this video.